So I'll tell you up front that we know a lot more about how to treat BPPV than we do on how to prevent it. But there are some, well, the research is showing that there are some risk factors that might predispose you to put you at a higher risk for developing BPPV or having those little crystals in the inner ear get loose. So let's look into what a few of those risk factors may be. Now the first one, head trauma. You can think about, you know, this could be head trauma, fall, um, you know, whiplash. You can think about that, that force, that physical force that may dislodge those crystals. And that one's a little bit straightforward, you know, you can you know, you hit your head, um, those little crystals get loose into the canal, and then you have to reposition them. Um, but the, the next one uh, is females. So BPPV is higher incident rate in females. Um, not much you can do about that one. Um, but um, that, that is one of the risk factors that's listed in the research. Uh, the next one, uh, vitamin D deficiency, which is one that comes up a lot. And I can't tell you the reason why, perhaps maybe there's um, some kind of mechanism where those little crystals aren't developing as they should. If there's a vitamin D deficiency, and then they're more prone or likely to get dislodged. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not sure if maybe somebody does, but um, vitamin D deficiency is another risk factor along with osteoporosis. Um, so now at this point you may be thinking that maybe there's a little bit of a of um, you know a category of person that might be higher risk. So females maybe postmenopausal with vitamin D deficiency and osteoporosis, uh, you just might be a little bit out of luck. Um, just joking. There's there, you're not out of luck. There's there's uh, things that you can do that we'll go over later on in this video. Um, but another risk factor for developing those little crystals getting loose is migraine. So they found that there's a higher incidence of those little crystals getting loose with people who experience migraines. Um, and also with a uh, higher total cholesterol level. level. And um, both of those make me think that, um, well, for the cholesterol level, Maybe there's some kind of mechanism where um, the blood flow is changing to the, the inner ear system and that's disrupting how it works, how things flow and um, people are being more prone for those little crystals getting loose. And the, what I can think of migraines is maybe that's a similar issue where there's some kind of change in blood flow that's um, contributing to that and that's, that's a complete Theory. Don't hold me that. To the, don't hold me that to that. Um, but um, yeah, other than that, not entirely sure why migraines and cholesterol um, would um, predispose you to having higher incidence of BPPB. But that's what they're finding in the research is a, a risk factor for those. And then other factors are going to be anything that is disturbing the inner ear, inflammation, anything that's um, you know, causing some kind of disruption to how the inner ear is functioning. Uh, so you can think about a vestibular neuritis. 10 to 20% of people with vestibular neuritis are going to have BPPV as well. And remember, you can have more than one diagnosis that's causing vertigo. So maybe you have vestibular neuritis with BPPV and even a cervicogenic component. Um, you, you're not just limited to just having one problem that's causing dizziness. Um, so along with the vestibular neuritis, you know, Meniere's disease that affects how the inner ear functions as well. Um, so, you know, there's these different, different um, processes that can occur in the inner ear that might disrupt how those little crystals are able to stay, stay on there. So what can you do about it? Um, if you're, if you have one of these risk factors, uh, you know, let's, let's start with the the low hanging fruit. If you are deficient in vitamin D, then talk to your doctor about supplementation for vitamin D. And they found that when you do supplement, you have you go back into that category of having a lower risk of developing it. So um, talk to your doctor about that, about supplementing for vitamin D. Um, some of these other ones, you know, nobody intends to hit their head, so uh, it's not like uh, you know that's really something that you can put on a list of, um, you know, things you can do preventatively. Um, but, uh, female, not much you could do about that one. Um, 
and then for cholesterol, there are things that you can do. You can lead a healthy life, healthy lifestyle as far as your diet goes, um, as far as exercising regularly. Exercise will not only help with the cholesterol issue, but also, I'm, I'm talking about cardiovascular exercise, will also help to um, improve blood flow and get things kind of flushed out in um, not only the brain, but um, just your system. Um, and then along with um, the um, vitamin D and osteoporosis, you know, those kind of go around in the same realm. So um, if you're addressing those things, then that will help with reducing your risk for BPPV. Um, and then another thing that you can do to help prevent BPP, BPPV is movement. So they found that moving around more is gonna help reduce your risk for developing, which is almost counterintuitive, but uh, you know, possibly that prevents those little crystals from clumping together and then getting this big thing dislodged into those canals. But um, yeah, movement, so don't avoid things. A lot of times people avoid things because they think, okay, well, I don't wanna experience BPPV. You know, last time I bent forward and got dizzy, um, so I'm just gonna stop bending forward, then I won't get it. Um, but they found that kind of the opposite is true, that the more you move around, the more you stimulate that inner ear system, the healthier it is going to be, and the less likely you, you are to develop those little crystals. So movement is key, vestibular exercises, habituation. I don't usually recommend that people um, go through that maneuver every single day and, because they, that puts a lot of like hope that I'm not going to develop BPPV, um, and I don't and think that's necessarily true. Um, you know, maybe it'll help um, it, you just move more and keep that system healthy, possibly. Um, I don't usually recommend that to my patients. I just tell them to not avoid movements um, and, you know, kind of carry on with their day. So, um, but it's up to you. Um, so, movement, exercise, stay hydrated, healthy diet. Um, supplement when you're low with some kind of uh, vitamin, uh, particularly vitamin D, um, and you know that's kind of the the best things that you can do right now that we know of. Um, with that, but I'll keep up on the research and hopefully you know they'll come up with something that will um, prevent it in the future. But we do know how to fix it. So if you need help with how to fix it, you can check out my Vertigo Kickstart uh, mini course where I go through how to. Uh, how you can test for what the be for which canal is involved and what the best maneuver is for that specific canal, and then afterwards how to rebalance and and uh, get back to uh, what you love to do. So um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, but thank you for watching.